Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kate, this is The Mystic in the Woods, and today I thought we would spend some time talking about tips, resources, and decks that I think could be helpful for new or beginning tarot readers. So the reason that I wanted to talk, do this video today is that a couple of reasons. So first, if you've been following me on Instagram or here on YouTube, then you know that I have been dedicating all of the month of August, so we're past August now, but I just dedicated the whole month of August to working exclusively with the Rider Waite imagery, revisiting traditional meanings, things like that. And while I was doing that throughout the month of August, I really thought a lot about when I was a beginning tarot reader and the things that I found helpful or the things I wish I'd done differently. So I thought that now would be a good time to do this video while I'm <laughs> all that stuff is fresh in my mind while I've been thinking about that. Some of these decks also may be leaving my collection, and so I just thought now might be a good time to talk about them while I still have them. So the first thing that I want to say before we get into decks is that you're going to want to have a good tarot book if you're new to tarot. Um, a lot of the decks that I'm going to talk about today come with either little white books or no book, and so you're going to want to have like a really solid tarot 101 type book. My two favorites are going to be Holistic Tarot by Benabel Wen and 78 Degrees of, R of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock. And I have a blog post I'll link below that has all of these resources listed out so that you can find all of them if you're interested in any of them. These have been my two favorite um, like foundation books. This one I read when I was new. This one I read more recently and wish I'd had it when I was new. So I think that these are both really great books to have if you are Kind of getting started with tarot. Now, if we're going to talk about decks, then of course we have to start with the Rider Waite deck, right? Now, if this doesn't resonate with you, stick with me because I have a few things to say about it that you're probably going to want to hear, and then we're going to talk about other decks too. And I have different decks for different price points with different artwork, so I've got a, a variety here. The Rider Waite Smith deck, if you have been you know, looking for a deck or if you're new to, to reading, I'm sure you've heard about this already. This is the Centennial version. I think this is the one that I see around the most often. And um, this is the deck that like all the other Rider Waite decks are based off of, right? This is the um, traditional imagery. There are, of course, like the Marseille and the Thoth and that type of, and those types of decks as well, those other systems, but the Rider Waite is probably more popular, at least it, from what I have observed, but I, I could very well be wrong. Now, the reason you may want to start with this deck is because this is the foundation from which all the other decks are built on, right? It's the one that all the books reference. It's the one that all the resources reference. In the blog post below, I also have linked some YouTube channels and some podcasts and things like that that I have found really helpful over the years, both as a beginner and even now as a more advanced reader, or I should say more seasoned reader. Um, this is the deck that is the foundation of all of that. And I did not start with the Rider Waite deck, but I wish that I had. Um, I wish that I had started with this deck and that I had stuck with it for like 6 to 12 months until I was super fluent with it. Um, I think that it's really easy to kind of get sucked into the collecting rabbit hole a little soon. And I, I think that at least for me, and I think for a lot of other people, is if you start with one deck and you stick with it until you're really fluent with it and you know all the imagery and all the meanings, that's going to really help you as you move into other decks. I didn't necessarily do that. I didn't stick with one deck as long as I think I should have. And that definitely slowed me down in the long run. So if you don't like this imagery, that's okay, because I do think it is important that the deck you're working with pull you in, that it speak to you on like an intuitive soul type level, right? But if the reason that you don't like this deck is because of the colors, which is why I don't like this deck, like these yellows and these oranges, like I look at this and I feel like, like I physically tense up and I find them very aversive. There are other Rider Waite Smith versions that are the same imagery, the same line work, but in other colors. If you do a quick Etsy search, you can find them with gold foil, you can find them in pink, you can find them in black and white, you can find them very antique looking. You can find the Rider Waite imagery in just about any color scheme that you want. The one I've been working with the last month that I so worked through this, worked with this throughout all of August, is the Modern Hue Tarot by Ritual Planner. This is the deck I wish I'd had when I started. Now the colors 
have been completely redone. And even in the traditional imagery, the, the colors all have meaning. So you do lose a little bit of something when you step away from the traditional coloring. However, if working with a deck like this or one that is a different color palette but is still the original line work, I still think that can be really beneficial for a beginner. I wish that this is the deck that I'd had when I first started and I wish I had stuck with it for like six to 12 months until I was super fluent with it, could read you know, about a variety of situations, was comfortable with all the meanings, stuff like that. I have found this color palette to speak very well to my intuition, to pull me in. Um, the color palette eases some of the mm, more challenging cards, like the tower or the devil, but it doesn't take away that little bit of like that little sting or that little visceral reaction. We have those cards for a reason. I think they're important. But a color palette like this can kind of help soften that a little bit if you're working through quite a bit of fear as you step into tarot, which I was. I had a lot of fear to work through. Um, and I think that this deck would have been perfect for when I was starting. So if, if it is the color especially, just do a quick Etsy search and see if you can find a Rider Waite Smith deck with different colors that work for you. But we also have options like the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. So this is basically the Rider Waite Smith imagery. It's in a little bit of a different art style. The color palette is different and it's in an Art Nouveau type, the style, right? And it also has all this gold foiling on it. The backs are, you know, look like this. So something like this can work great as well. So it's it's very true to the original imagery, but the art style is different. As we take yet another step away, there are a lot of decks similar to, this is the Modern Witch, the Modern Witch Tarot. I don't personally reach for this deck a lot, but it's a fun one to have and it's a very easy reader. Um, there are a lot of decks like this where they are basically the Rider Waite Smith imagery but redone with different characters or in a different world or something like that so like the modern witch tarot is a little bit modern so like this is a hierophant so it's a little bit this is different than the original imagery but a lot of these are very very close to the original and i think that something like this works really well as a first deck as well so that you still get that very traditional symbolism and um, the characters are acting out the cards in a very similar way but maybe the imagery speaks to you a little bit more or a little bit better um so there are lots of ones lots of decks like this and there are lots of places to find them right so it's basically the rider wade smith deck but it's just a little different and so there are lots of ones like this that can be great for beginners now the next deck is going to be the Darkness of Light Tarot. So this was one of my first decks, it wasn't my first deck. And until recently, this was the closest to a Rider Waite deck I'd worked with. The challenge of this deck for somebody who is newer is that the titles of the majors are not in English. They're in Italian, I believe it's Italian. So that could slow you down in learning the majors. Um, that's something to consider. But otherwise, this is very close to the Rider Waite Smith imagery. We're going to get the feel for the traditional imagery, but you can see like the art style is different. The color palette is different. Um, one of the things that can be nice about a deck like this is that each suit has its own color palette and that can, I found that helpful as a beginner. Um, another thing to consider when you're looking for a deck as a beginner is do you want keywords on the deck? For some people, having keywords on the deck can be really helpful. So like this says three of coins and that's it. Some decks have keywords and astrological associations and things like that. And some people find that very helpful when they're starting to read. I actually found it distracting. Um, I had, I think the first deck I purchased had keywords on it and I very quickly set it aside because I found the keywords to be limiting and slowing me down. But a lot of people find them to actually be helpful. Now, the next two decks take yet another step away from that traditional imagery, but they're easy readers. I think you still get the feel for each individual card meaning and the traditional imagery, um, and I think they're pretty popular for beginners as well. So one is the Lightseer's Tarot. I have the tin version. They have a standard version as well. This is a more modern sort of boho type feel to it. 
And if you like this artwork in this color palette, this can be a really good deck for beginners. I had the standard one um, a couple of years ago, the standard size. I gifted it because I wasn't using it. Recently, I kind of wanted to try this deck out again, so I bought the tin version this time. Um, and this is a deck that a lot of people find very easy to read, very easy to understand the meanings, and it's also a deck that helped me to like understand a few of the cards I was struggling to understand. Like I already knew them, um, like Judgment was one. I already understood, like I knew the, the traditional meaning of Judgment, but this deck was a deck that helped me really understand Judgment. Um, so this deck can be a really great option for beginners, I think, as well. And like I said, this is a very popular deck. I think it's popular for a reason. I think that it is, a, I think it's a really good deck. Um, well, I mean, I think these are all good decks. But anyway, I am happy to have this one back in my collection, and I do really enjoy this one. I think I'm going to be using it a little bit more. Um, okay, so then we also have the Tarot of the Abyss. And this is another one that, again, takes another step away from traditional imagery. Here's the backing. However, if this imagery pulls you in, because I do think there's something to be said for that, having a deck where the imagery pulls you in, it speaks to you, it is speaking to a... To, to what you need in that moment, I think that there's something to be said for that. And I think it's really easy to, like I said, fall down the collection rabbit hole early for a couple reasons. First, it's fun. Most of us collect decks because we love it. Um, just like I collect books. Like, I need a bookshelf three times that size to hold all my books, but we've recently moved, so I don't have that yet. Um, so a lot of us collect decks like we collect books. However, as I mentioned earlier, I think it can kind of slow you down. And um, I think that you can also fall into that rabbit hole trying to find the deck that's going to make it easier for you to learn tarot. And that certainly is going to be true. So like for perhaps this deck speaks to you. Like you look at this deck and you know these people, you know these characters, you understand what the card is conveying. But like you look at, you know, the modern Hue tarot and you feel completely, you don't feel anything at all. Then I do think that, you know, something like the Tarot of the Abyss could be better for you as an individual. But regardless of the deck you choose, you still have to spend time getting to know it, getting to know the meanings, learning how to read card spreads as a whole. So it can be tempting to think, well, maybe if I found a different deck, this would be easier and I'd, I'd advance quicker. And while that could be true to a point, I don't know that, like, at least for me, in my experience, that wasn't the thing that was going to help me learn tarot fastest. So this is Anna's deck. I think it's, uh, this is one of my absolute favorite decks at this point. I read for it with, for other people all the time. Um, but I think that what is going to help you learn the meanings faster and more thoroughly than the deck you're using is going to be having some sort of daily tarot practice. Um, and then perhaps like a more in-depth weekly or monthly practice. So one of the things that helped me, and I've got a few more decks to get through as well, <laughs> um, but one of the things that really helped me as a beginner, and this is something I still do to this day, and I have a video on my daily tarot practice as it looks right now as the mother of an infant, um, what helped me the most was doing morning and evening draws. So doing a, a daily draw in the morning, to either ask a specific question or to find, to ask, mm, you know, what energies am I going to be working with today? What are the themes that are I'm working through today? And then if there's time, journaling, meditating, journeying, whatever that looks like for you to really get to know that card. Um, and then in the evening, drawing another card, asking what I am supposed to have taken away from how that, that morning card played out in my evening. So like, let's say I pulled the... Um, the Page of Swords in the morning. It's funny that that's the card I pulled because I pulled her. I pulled the Page of, of Swords earlier this week. Anyway, 
page of swords in the morning and then I pull the page of wands in the evening. So in the morning I ask, you know, what, what energies am I working through today? And I pull the page of swords. So now I can do some journaling. Um, I can look at the traditional meanings. I could journey with this card. Then in the evening I ask, what is it for about the page of swords that I'm supposed to understand in how it played out throughout my day? And I pull the page of wands. Now I can look at how these two cards work together how they interact together, and I can see how these two cards actually played out in my day. This helped me to learn the traditional meanings the fastest, as well as how these cards show up for me and how I read them, and to deepen my understanding of each card. I still do this practice. To this day, it continues to help me unearth new layers of tarot meanings. Um, new layers, new meanings, just it really helps me to continue to peel back layers of each card. So I have found that practice to be far more beneficial than having the right deck. Okay, I'm gonna be right back because I forgot to grab a couple. We've got three more decks. The next one I wanna talk about is Guardians of the Night Tarot. This is, um, this is the independently produced version, but I believe it has been picked up mass market. This is just the only animal deck in my collection that I think would be really helpful or really a good one for a beginner. Like I would recommend to a beginner who's looking for an animal deck. Um, there are lots of other animal decks on the market. Now, I will say for most people, I do think that starting with a fully illustrated, so not a pip deck, a fully illustrated deck that has people on each card is going to help you learn your meanings the fastest. However, for some people, an animal deck may help to take the pressure off. So there's this psychological thing that happens, right? So when we look at a, a picture with people, it may, for most of us, be easier to understand how that card applies to the human experience. However, for others and for certain situations, cards that don't have animals on them can actually help to take some of that pressure off and can actually help you and be more um, easier for you to read than if it has people. So this is just a personal thing. So this is just the tarot or the animal deck that I have that I think is good for beginners that I would recommend to a beginner because even with animal there are <laughs> even with animal decks there are still a lot of animal decks that follow the rider weight imagery very very closely they're just illustrated with animals instead of with people and I think that that's what you're looking for if you're going to go with an animal deck this is one that I have. I love the animals that she chose. I love that it has a variety of animals on it. I don't work with this deck a lot yet, so I'm still really getting to know it. Um, but I do think that this one can be suitable for a beginner. There is also the Crow Tarot by the same creator. It's also a mass market. And I do think that that one is very close to the Rider Waite imagery as well. I don't have that one. Um, so that could also be a good option as well. This deck can be... So the reason I like this deck is that it sticks close to the traditional imagery. Um, but we have animals. But it also, just because they're animals, it doesn't take away, as I was talking about earlier, some of that um, visceralness that we might feel when we look at a, a more challenging card. But so here's the Fool from the Modern Hue, and here's the Fool from this. So we still have this, you know, for this character stepping out onto something. And in this deck, we can really get the feel for the possibility of it going well or the possibility of it going not so well, right? So this deck, I think, is a really nice balanced deck um, that still holds true to Rider weight imagery but has animals instead of people. There are a variety of decks like that on the market. Okay, so then the second to last deck is going to be the Sasser Abito Tarot. Now, this one has, first of all, my favorite backing ever. And it has a very solid little white book for, for beginners. I think this white book is very solid for beginners. You're still going to want a bigger book, I think, to go with it, but it's a really good one. This is definitely now departing from traditional imagery. However, if you look at this imagery and you love the art style and it pulls you in and you feel like you understand the characters in this deck, I think that this can be a really good option for beginners as well. Um, you're definitely departing from traditional imagery here. So you, again, I really think that it is very beneficial to start with that. However, um, I do think that this deck can be a really good option if it really speaks to you and really pulls you in. 
All right, and then the last deck, I've got one more option, and this is the furthest from the Rider Waite deck. This is the Spacious Tarot. This is not an animal deck. It's not a people deck. There are some animals in it, so, but, and we also have the court cards have been changed, the names, so that can also be a, a challenge for new readers. However, so it is a, and it's not really a pip deck, it's like a landscape deck. It's like, you know, so here we have the moon, and we have the moon, and we have the mushrooms, and there's a lot to go off here, even though it's simple and there aren't any characters in it. Um, this deck can be a good, good one for beginners, I think, if you look at these images and you think, okay, now I understand, I understand what's going on in those. If, if you look at this imagery and you, you feel them and you understand them, then this can be a good deck. I don't personally love the suit of wands in this in this deck. That's just me. Um, I love the majors. I've actually considered taking the majors out and using it as just a majors only deck. Um, but if this deck really speaks to you, I think that this deck can be a great option for beginners as well. But you are definitely leaving traditional imagery here. You're, you're getting the, the feeling. So here's the Nine of Swords. Here's the Eight of Swords. You're definitely getting the, the feeling of the traditional meaning. They're here for sure. I'm not saying that they're not. Um, but, you know, this is pretty pippish. So I do think that this can be an, a, a pretty good option for beginners as well. So those are some of my top decks, deck recommendations if you are newer to tarot. Those are some of my top tips for if you're newer to tarot. Um, and I will put the rest of the resources. Like I said, I've got some podcasts that I found really helpful, a handful of YouTube channels that I found really helpful when I was getting started um, and still help me to this day, both with reading tarot, understanding the meanings, also stepping out of that fear that I was really coming out from under, you know, the, the whole... Christian, toxic Christian theology thing. And if you're Christian, I don't mean that in, not all Christianity is toxic, but I was coming out of from underneath the toxicity of what it can be. Um, and so I had a lot of fear to let go of. And so these are the channels that really helped me and some of the resources that really helped me both learning to use tarot, but also learning to use tarot as a spiritual tool to find my own path and to let go of a lot of that fear. So I will put all of those resources in that blog post, which is below, so you can find all of that if you're interested. But otherwise, that is what I have for you today. If you are a seasoned reader, I'd love to know what your first deck is or what you recommend for beginners in the comments. And if you are a beginner and you have any questions or there's something you'd specifically like me to talk about, definitely let me know in the comments below as well. All the links are in the description. You can book a reading, learn more, find me on Instagram, all that stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.